Welcome to the Gambling Show. Jarvis Landry saw Doug Peterson guarantee a win against the Cowboys last week and said, <laughs> child's play, hold my beer. Social video for exactly what you need. Catapult, unique, powerful, creative. Broncos at Colts. The Broncos are a terrible football team. The Colts are not. Joe Flacco has worse pocket presence than a baby kangaroo. He's not going anywhere. Jacoby Brissett has excellent pocket presence, never turns the ball over, and also has one of the highest touchdown rates in the league. So, and he's a backup that probably could have started for the Broncos. And of course, based on last week's results, backups seem to be a problem for the Denver Broncos defense. Vic Fangio said he wanted to see some oomph from his new starting wide receiver, Deshaun Hamilton, after they traded starting receiver and person whose name I know, Emmanuel Sanders. When asked to describe what oomph actually is, Vic Fangio said, I, I don't know, I can't really define it for you, but I still wanna see it. That's the kind of coach you don't quit on. The kind of coach who refuses to define words and then holds you to that standard in an effort to motivate you with confusion. Like being three hours into an Alan Watts playlist on YouTube. The Colts have had every reason in the world to fail this season. Andrew Luck retired at the beginning of the year. They've been decimated with injuries all season long on the defense. Their kicker has seen more ghosts than Sam Darnold. And yet, they lead their division and are one of the best teams in the league. The Broncos, on the other hand, suck. They just suck. <laughs> ESPN's Jeff Legwald wrote this week that their recalibrated expectations this year should be to go 6-10. 6-10? Really, Jeff? Who wants to go 6-10? and 10? Much in line with everything that the Broncos have done and said since Peyton Manning retired, that doesn't make any damn sense. 6-10 and 10 is the record of teams that are too bad to make the playoffs, but also too stupid to tank and get good draft position. It's the official record of the Washington Redskins. Take the Colts and the over. Panthers at 49ers. Interesting stat, Jimmy Garoppolo is 14-2 as a starter, 12-2 as a starter for the San Francisco 49ers. Also interesting, he has seven touchdowns and seven turnovers on the season. Once again, proving that having a great defense, coach, myriads of talent around you makes you a better quarterback than being a good quarterback. It's called the Terry Bradshaw Gambit, and much like Terry Bradshaw, he is both the best and the worst part of the broadcast. Yes, give the quarterback who doesn't throw touchdowns the spotlight while the best tight end in the league quietly smiles in the background. Get ready to be window dressing for the rest of your career, George Kittle. Ron Rivera named Kyle Allen the starting quarterback this week, even though Cam Newton is ready to return. This is because he's a smart person who likes winning football games. Now that Newton has officially lost his job, I'm very concerned that he is going to become both Thelma and Louise. Panthers may not win, but they will cover. Oh, and take the under in this one. Most of the scoring will be done by people other than quarterbacks, so... If you have Christian McCaffrey or George Kittle on your team, congratulations. Packers at Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes dislocated his knee on a dive play that was very unnecessary early in the Broncos game last Thursday night, which means that generic white guy who's been backing up various starting quarterbacks in the lower East Coast for the last decade is starting for the Chiefs. Matt Moore is the model of the generic white guy quarterback they give you in Madden. Last week, the Chiefs crushed the Broncos, who are technically a football team this season. This week, they take on Aaron Rodgers, who is not Joe Flacco. He's everything that Chiefs fans want to give Patrick Mahomes credit for already being. Both Moore and Rodgers will be throwing two notorious abusers in this game. Aaron Jones, who is notorious for abusing defenses, and Tyreek Hill, who is notorious for abusing, well, everything, really. You can't bring up his abusive past with Chiefs fans because, as we all know, if it happened before he was with the Chiefs, it didn't happen at all. And why should he be blamed anyways? He consistently takes a swing at anything that's in arm's length. It's very consistent. It's the kind of consistency that Andy Reid demands from his players. Take the Packers and over on 48 points. No defense will be played in this game at all. Browns at Patriots. Jarvis Landry decided it was a good idea to guarantee a win this week against the best team in football. Maybe the best team ever. Yeah, that's the team you want to guarantee a win against when you're two and four. Oh, it's simple, is it? Is it? It's as simple as taking a in the morning. I'm gonna in the morning. It's that simple. I'm gonna p The only problem with the Browns is that when they try to take a piss in the morning, they miss the toilet entirely, pee all over the floor, slip in the pee, and then head goes straight into toilet. 
Patriots defense has more turnovers than Brian Arakpo's bakery. And Baker Mayfield, being a baker, is making turnovers at maybe the best rate of any player in NFL history. He's also busy doing other menial tasks like mowing the grass, picking up trash after games, cleaning out lockers of players who've been cut because they can't stop doing drugs to escape the horrors of being in Cleveland. All of this means that he's just too busy to learn how to read a defense. It's a lot to ask of one man. This means that the Browns shouldn't ask Baker Mayfield to throw the ball very much in this game, but they're the Browns and their wide receiver just guaranteed a win against the best team in the league. So expect them to throw the ball a lot and early. And expect Bill Belichick to abuse the Browns all game long for firing him a quarter of a century ago. That guy doesn't let go of anything. All the way down to the meaningless point in the game where it's totally out of hand, they've won the game, they're up by 30, and he's declining penalties to force fourth and short punt situations so he can get the ball back and score some more points. Literally nothing makes Bill Belichick happier than lording strategic oddities over dumb football teams. This is yet another thing that he lives for. Torturing sad, pathetic creatures and also lording his superior intelligence over them while he does it. Patriots wide receiver Josh Gordon will be placed on IR and, and cut after the season. Proof of how football can ruin a very promising drug habit. And the Patriots traded for Mohamed Sanu, making them even more the best team in the league than they already were. Take the Patriots and the over. The turnover. The Patriots special teams defense may account for enough points to hit the over in this game. And I'm, I'm not joking about that. Uh, they're really, really good. And uh, we, had, we didn't even mention Tom Brady. Didn't even mention Tom Brady uh, in this analysis of the Patriots. That's how good they are. You're, the rest of the league is culpable in this, by the way. The re, it's, it's not like the other 31 teams couldn't just refuse to make trades with the Patriots. They help the Patriots improve themselves every single season. You can complain all you want to. It's your fault. Social video for exactly what you need. Catapult. Unique. Powerful. Creative.